Hi, welcome back to our Honors Geometry video series. Here's our Chapter 8 review for the semester final exam. So there are three big things you need to know about. You need to know about your Pythagorean theorem. You need to know about your special right triangles. And you need to know about your sine, cosine, and tangent trigonometry functions today. Those are the big three ideas that we're going to use. So first thing we should do is we should determine using our Pythagorean theorem of a squared plus b squared equals c squared, let's determine if these are acute, obtuse, or right triangles. But first, we should figure out if it's a triangle at all. So I want to figure out if that's a triangle. And the way that I would do that is if I have a triangle, I've got three sides. That's not what I wanted. I've got three sides. And my two smaller sides should add up to be larger than the third side. Because if they're equal, so this would be equal sides, I will not get a triangle. Because I don't have enough material here to connect my three sides. There's not enough material there to connect to make a triangle. My two smaller sides should add up to be larger than the third side. So let's just take a second and check here to make sure these are all triangles. 20 and 30 is 50. That works. 6 and 12 adds up to 18 but that is not larger than 18. So that would not be a triangle. The other ones, it seems, works. Uh, so C would work and A would work. It's the first thing I should check to make sure that that's a triangle at all. Once I've got that down, I'm going to look for my two smaller sides. Those would be my A and B. My C is going to be off by itself. So I will take A squared plus B squared, or 40, sorry, 40, 400 plus 900 to get 1300. That would get me 1600. And I'm going to ask myself, is this number, is that number too big, too small, or just right? Now, I'd like it to be equal. That would be nice. That would be a right triangle. But that's not 1,300. That's too big. So if it's too big, I'm going to get an obtuse triangle. All right, let's take a second and try C. So get 30 squared plus 40 squared. That should get me 2,500 equals 2,500. And if they're equal, if a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then I get a right triangle. Now, I'd encourage you to pause the video here, try 4a and 4c, and then unpause it to check your work and to do 4b together. So here we should have gotten a right triangle. 4C, if I add these two up, I would not get a number greater than 20. That would be equal to 20. So that would not be a triangle. So that one is not a triangle at all. But if you did the work, right, if you did not recognize that that is a set of numbers that would not get you a triangle, then just so that we can feel good about ourselves, then you'd have an obtuse triangle. But I know that I can't have that being a triangle at all. Now for B, I'm gonna first take a second and identify what decimal is the largest. And I believe it's three, three root five would be your biggest number. So I'd say two root three squared plus four root two squared. And then I'll compare that to three root five squared. So here I've got 2 squared is 4 
times root 3 squared. 4 squared is 16. If I square that root 2, I get just 2. This would be 9 times 5. So that's 12 plus 32 is 44. That's 45. Well, my c squared is too big. It's larger, which means that would be an obtuse triangle. All right, now there's a challenge problem here. This is one where you definitely need to pause the video and try this on your own. There are two numbers that I can get to have a right triangle where the other two sides are 25 and 65. I would pause the video, try this on your own, and unpause to check your work. So your two options, you can have 25 and 65 as your hypotenuse, or you could have 25 and 65 as the legs, and you don't know the hypotenuse. So if you have 65 as your hypotenuse, then your third side would be 60. That's a 5, 12, 13, just multiplied by 5. Or here, x would be 69.6. So those are your two options. Now this is one that doesn't come up much. It's similar triangles like we did yesterday. But I do want to talk about it. Now you don't necessarily need these formulas but I'll give them to you on the final. So here, if I wanted to use the formulas, I would identify what part do I have. I have an altitude. I don't have any of these two legs, but I do have an altitude. So I would set up my fraction as altitude over part of the hypotenuse is equal to the other part of the hypotenuse over the altitude. Or if I wanted to do this in a more straightforward way without a formula. I've got two right triangles here. It looks like X would be the larger leg and one would be the smaller leg. So if I did longer leg divided by smaller leg, well in the red triangle, it looks like three is the longer leg and X is the smaller leg and we end up with the same thing no matter what we do. If I were to solve that, x squared is 3, so x is the square root of 3. For this one, I can do the same thing with one right triangle and two right triangles. This is my two right triangles. I can use the formula. If I'm solving for y, y is not the altitude, y is a leg. So I would say the leg over the whole hypotenuse of seven equals the part of the hypotenuse closest to y over that same leg. That's one way to do it. Or if I wanted to do this without the formula, I could look at my green triangle. In my green triangle, y is the hypotenuse. And the only other leg I know is the short leg, which is 2. So I have the hypotenuse over the short leg. Hypotenuse over short leg. In the big triangle, the red triangle, my whole hypotenuse is 7, and the smaller leg is y. So what this is, that's hypotenuse over the short leg in both of those triangles. So you don't necessarily need to memorize those formulas, but they are nice to have just in case. And you can see that we get the same thing no matter what. If I were to cross multiply, I get y squared equals 14. And if I were to cross multiply here, I get y squared equals 14 again.
or y equals the square root of 14. So two options. Now this one's going to go pretty fast. This one you might not even wa need to watch the video for. But in a special right triangle, if it's a 45, 45, 90, I get x, x, and x root 2. If it's 30, 60, 90, I start with the short leg, and then across from 60 is your root 3 side, and then across from 90 is your 2x side. All right, now I'll give you some time here. Why don't you try the next two sets of problems? I would be very careful on 3, 6, and, well, I guess 3 and 6 on that second page. But let's take some time, pause the video, and try all those. All right, so you should have tried the rest of those already. And they're pretty straightforward, so I'm not going to go through those. But here, I've got a short side. I gave you the shortest side, just like I did in number two. So if I wanted to find the hypotenuse, I would take that number and multiply by two. So that process is not going to change. It's still two times 13 or 26. It's just that I have a root three there now. And how would I find the side across from 60, well, I would multiply my short leg times the square root of 3. I'll do the same thing here. I just end up with 13 root 3 times another square root of 3. Well, if I were to square a square root, if I take the square root of 3 times itself twice, that ends up canceling out the square roots or simplifying to just a 3. So this would be 13 times 3, or 39. All right, same idea here. On 6, I gave you the side across from 60. Usually it has a root 3 on it, but here it does not. So if I wanted to find out what y is, I would have to divide by the square root of 3, and that would get me 3 root 3 if I were to simplify. And then, of course, that would be... 6 root 3. All right, so there's our special right triangles, our trigonometry. What I want to do for trigonometry is I need to remember what sine, cosine, and tangent are. So here I need to look from 60. It looks like I don't have the opposite. I have the adjacent and the hypotenuse. So I need to look at what uses adjacent hypotenuse. That would be cosine. So cosine of 60 over 1 is my adjacent over hypotenuse. All right, why don't you solve this one for x, and then take a minute and try b. All right, so what I should have here is x should be 5.5. And here I should have the tangent of 32 is opposite over adjacent. And x should be about 8.1. Now, I really didn't need sine, cosine, and tangent for a because this is a 30, 60, 90. So if 11 is twice the length of the short leg, just divide 11 by 2, and you get your final answer. Now, if I'm working backwards to find an angle, from that angle, I will identify what two sides I have. I have opposite and adjacent. So I'll use the tangent of that angle, that unknown theta. So tangent of theta would be the opposite over the adjacent. But hold on, I've got this variable, that theta. It's locked into a tangent. So I need to understand how to undo tangent. Well, the opposite of tangent would be tangent inverse. It's an inverse operation. All right, why don't you take a minute here, and let's see if we can find our degree measures on C, 
D and E, then we'll do some word problems, and then we'll get out. So I would pause the video, try those, unpause, check your work. All right, here we should have 49.96 degrees or about 50 degrees. Here I should have the cosine inverse of the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is about 36.9 degrees. And here I have 45 degrees. Now you could have done tangent, but you didn't need to. If you were to notice that these two are equal, it's an isosceles right triangle, which means you have 45, 45, 90. And then the hypotenuse, of course, would be 3 root 2. So we'll try a couple word problems. Brian's flying a kite. So I'll draw, I'll draw Brian. Maybe I'll give him a little top hat. There's Brian. Brian's got his kite. It's a very windy day. So Brian's kite is flying above a field at a 65 meter length of string. So let me make my right triangle. If the angle of elevation to the kite measures 70 degrees, how high is the kite above Brian's head? So first thing we need to make sure we do is again, we're drawing a horizon line. So straight across from his hand, from the starting point. And draw my horizon line. And then I'll connect that to make a right triangle. So elevation, that angle of elevation is 70 degrees. If it's a 65 meter string, my string length should go there. And I wanna know what the height is. So let's use our sine, cosine, and tangent to find the height of this, the uh, kite above Brian's head. We should get about 61.1 meters. Now the airplane one's gonna be a little bit more challenging. Let's see if I can draw a decent jet. There's my plane and it's flying. And again, we got to draw that horizon line. That's the first thing we should always do. It's flying and the pilot's looking down at a building. The pilot's looking down at a building. The angle of depression is going to be where? Well, it should be here. You're looking down at 28 degrees. So there's my 28 degree angle of depression. Here's my right triangle. And I wanna find out the distance from the plane to the building. Well, distance is always gonna be measured horizontally. Height is always measured vertically. I wanna know what that X is. I'll give you a minute here. I'd like you to pause the video, try that one out on your own, and then unpause to check your work. You should have the tangent of 28. Opposite over adjacent. So it's really 1200 divided by the tangent of 28. And you should get 2000. 256.9 meters. All right, now your homework for tonight is the semester one, or not semester one, semester two exam review number one. So semester two exam review number one. 
Your final exam review packet is split into five parts. Tonight's homework is due tomorrow. So, so you've got the chapter seven review and you've got this first part of your final review due tomorrow at the start of class. Please, when you have questions, let me know what they are. Send me an email and I will see you 